Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Joe Keita, and I wanted to welcome you all here today. I'm the editor of the Fresno Bee, and I really hope you are ready to laugh tonight. With all the craziness 2020 has brought to the world, I really think we need it. By the end of the night, I'm sure you will agree with me that internationally syndicated cartoonist Lee Rubin is just the antidote we need for trying times. So without further ado, I'd like to welcome Jim Boren, who will be our host for the evening. Jim is the executive director of the Institute of, of Media and Public Trust at Fresno State. Prior to his current role, he spent decades as a journalist at the Fresno Bee and was my predecessor as executive editor. So welcome, Jim. Can you tell us a little bit more about the work you're doing at the Institute? And after that, feel free to introduce Lee and get the show started. Great, thanks, Joe. Our Media Institute at Fresno State is dedicated to increasing media literacy in our community, devising strategies to identify fake news, and helping to bridge the trust gap between the public and media outlets. I hope you all will join us in this important work. So what a treat we have with Lee Rubin today. This is going to be a fun ride. Lee is an accomplished author and cartoonist and has written 20 books. Rubes, his internationally syndicated cartoon is celebrated, is celebrating its 36th year this year. Can you believe that? Lee is a huge talent. Lee's work has been featured in film, television, and advertising. Lee also enjoys a busy schedule, giving thought-provoking and entertaining presentations on art and creativity at conferences, as well as professional organizations all around the country. In 2018, Lee began his tenure at Rochester Institute of Technology as the college's first cartoonist in residence. And on November 7th, 2018, Lee and his co-producer, Ryan Johnson, premiered the pilot episode of their TV show, Drawing Inspiration, at a special East Coast showing at the Rochester Institute of Technology. So thank you, Lee, for sharing your work with us today. And by the way, viewers, you'll be able to ask questions along the way, and we'll get to them at the end of the session. Okay, Lee, let's have some fun. It's all yours. Thanks, Joe, and Jim. I really appreciate that. I just want to let you know that I brought Scoopy along with me today as the mascot. Uh, Scoopy was created for the McClatchies by Walt Disney. So say hi, Scoopy. Okay. <laughs> um, so what is the secret of creating a perfect cartoon? Certain conditions apply. Well, I'm glad you asked that question because I'm sure you did, right, Jim? You, you yes, I did. Okay, good. Uh, because I brought my attorney along, my uh, my shark cartoon attorney, to read uh, uh, this further this this disclaimer. This is the opinions expressed by this cartoonist during the following presentation do not reflect the opinions, views, or cartoons of any other cartoonist, living or dead, or even those in a state of suspended animation. So perfection, what is it? And it's like beauty, it's in the eye of the beholder. And this is why I like to say the idea of acceptable perfection. Perfection may come with some flaws, but if it's perfect enough, then it's perfectly acceptable. And as we see this couple here, uh, another match made in heaven, courtesy of loweredexpectations.com. So I think like creating the perfect cartoon, there there are ingredients and you have to add in ingredients like is if you're cooking some kind of stew and but how much of each ingredient that is the real trick and this is the perfect cartoon contains imagination brevity levity art and of course surprise all are essential ingredients in creating the perfect cartoon and then i go i ask the question again but how much uh and but Aside from those, there are two main pillars that I like to, to use as my guideposts here. And they are, you know, make it visually interesting and make it funny. And as you can see from these two guys, they are standing on their pillars. And for those of you who want to get nitpicky, because these days everybody's got something to say, these are Romans and that's Times New Roman uh, typeface there. So it's not the one I usually use. Typeface humor. Yes, typeface humor. Yeah, it's not, you're only going to get that here tonight, and it's very little of it, thankfully. This is, so this is what I this is what I start with every day, and and see that question mark in there. Well, that's that's the dilemma I face. 
or should I say, it's the challenge I face, the opportunity every day to come up with an idea. And to come up with an idea to put in that little box, that little eight by nine box, as I start with it, I start on actual paper. I have a well, a certain guide guides, uh, certain rules that I apply to my own life. And like, how, how am I going to make this work? And this is the slide with the most type on it all night. Create something whimsical that generally doesn't take the reader more than 15 seconds to get. But that part's optional. I don't care if it takes you two weeks. It's the payoff that's important. Um, that provides the reader a degree of familiarity from their own lives that invites them to actively contribute to the experience. Hopefully you've had some pop culture reference or, or some experience in your own life that you can bring to the cartoon so you can relate to it. Uh, the cartoons I like to create are evergreen, so they'll be as fresh 30 years from now as they will, you know, <laughs> as they will be from 30 years in the past. And I actually have a cartoon in this presentation tonight that is more than 30 years old, and I think it still holds up. Oh, that doesn't get me kicked out of newspapers because it does happen on occasion. Fortunately, uh, I hopefully I'm not in any danger of uh, the Fresno Bee uh, kicking me out. I'll be clean tonight, I promise. Uh, I like family friendly, but with an edge. Um, never underestimate the intelligence of the reader. That is so important uh, because as we all know, comics readers are the most intelligent people, aren't they? They are. They are. Okay. And, and of course, the ultimate goal of every cartoon is that will cause the reader to spray coffee all over their morning paper, mobile phone, or tablet. It was a lot cheaper when it was just the paper. But, you know, these days people get their news from lots of places. So, imagination. Big, big component. Probably the biggest one. My imagination, your imagination, we all, we all mix this together. This is... Uh, Oh, geez, now what are we supposed to do? I only had enough imagination to get us here. So when I'm creating a cartoon, one of those secrets is to leave it to your imagination again so you can contribute. I don't have to show any, or I don't have to show everything. I can just show bits and pieces. Uh, like I don't need to show the entire scene. It's almost like I get to be a director and pick the shot. And this is, uh, we have kind of an over the shoulder shot of the uh, the two New York City detective cow cops or bull cops. And this is definitely no amateur job. They only took the most expensive cuts. So I don't need to show you the cow underneath uh, because we all know it didn't end well for that cow. But I, in all honesty, no cows were harmed in the drawing of this cartoon. And this is actually kind of based on the old Law and Order episodes. You know, they've seen it all. So they make wise cracks at the darkest times. Now, another trick to leave something to your imagination is a is a technique that I like to use called the double bubble, uh, where I take the dialogue of one character and place it over the dialogue of another character. Uh, so you don't get to see what the second character is saying or the first character is saying, I should say. But you know what it is if you have any sort of familiarity with this saying or life experience. This is, wow, that's sure not where I'd want to be when the, that makes two of us. <laughs> uh, you know, this could be a, a, a metaphor for, for 2020, couldn't it, Jim? <laughs> it <laughs> could, definitely. <laughs> I, mean, I should put that little, well, never mind. Uh, so I've got uh, another example, my favorite example of a double bubble. Well, if it isn't Mr. High and Mighty, always looking down on us and walking around like he's got a stick up. Hey, this is a family paper. <laughs> so one of, one of the joys, of course, of, of creating a cartoon is you can make anything into a character, whether it's an inanimate object or not. So we have two regular hot dogs and a hot dog on a stick. Uh, more leaving things to your imagination because we're not done with that yet. This is, okay, here goes. Now observe as the dude dwelling downstairs comes tearing out as soon as I make this loud flushing sound. So we've got the guy, he's looking over the hole. You can only imagine what's going on downstairs as soon as this guy starts doing his impression of a toilet flushing and the other guy looking bug-eyed out, can't wait to see the guy run in into, uh, hopefully not into the ladder 
that he's got. So we've all got those upstairs neighbors or it's sometime in our life if we lived in an apartment, we had the annoying neighbor upstairs. Uh, now, there are some subjects that are very, very sensitive and you don't necessarily want to be able to make fun make fun of somebody, but you can ha at least at least bring a subject to light. Uh, you know, sexual har uh, harassment, there's nothing funny about that. And it's really good to see some of these folks these days getting their comeuppance for the deeds they've done in the past. Uh, but, and I, I do like to touch on subject matter like this, but you have to do it in a way that really leaves a lot to the imagination and still the person gets their comeuppance here. And this is, there would be a loud thud at gone forever was the eighth and undoubtedly most obnoxious dwarf gropey. So Jim, you can see this, his, uh, uh, Gropey's hand is reaching backward and Snow White is turning red. She's pretty upset here. And we all know what's going to happen with that uh, rolling pin. No more Gropey. Uh, imagination again. I'm, I'm going to leave, uh, you know, a lot, a lot's going on here. Now, my wife and I go to the beach. And we, when we could drive onto the beach here, we live very close to Pismo Beach, California. Uh, and it's a, just a nice place to relax and watch the whales jumping out of the water, watch the seabirds. And this one particular day, we saw this one whale jumping and jumping and jumping. And it was so close to the shore, it really got me wondering and imagining, like, wow, what is going on there? It was spectacular. The whale kept breaching. And, and I was wondering, okay, so we see what's going above the water. I, and then I imagine what's going on below the water. And this is what we see and what we don't see. Who knew? Yeah, I mean, who knew? Now we know, you know, and question answered. Uh, I have a question for you, Jim. Uh, sure. do, you, do you have a dog or have you ever had a dog? Sure. Okay. Have you ever walked your dog? Of course. Okay, good. So if you were living in Robin Hood's times and you happen to be wealthy, would there be a disadvantage for Robin Hood to rob from you when you're walking your dog? Probably. <laughs> well, imagine this. <laughs> Never rob from the rich when they're out walking their dog. <laughs> so you have that surprise um, uh, element in there uh, too, and you you had to leave it to your imagination. Uh, and, uh, again, in a in a way to subtly uh, get around censors, you have to to leave a lot to everybody's imagination. And here we have Overcoming Temptation, David opted against the obvious unsportsmanlike cheap shot. <laughs> now, I think almost one of my favorite examples of, um, well, when dog walking comes in really handy, uh, I, I have a lot of time to think um, when I'm on these walks of cartoon ideas and I'm observing the world around me. <clears throat> and oh, this is several years ago. I better get that. Hold on. Oh, wait. wait, it's not mine. It's yours. I'm calling Jim to tell him to turn his phone off. I'm just kidding. So, so several years ago, <laughs> several years ago, I was uh, walking my dog and it was early December and I saw a crow drop a walnut in the street right in front of me. And I was just, kind of like wow mesmerized this this crow is using the street as its nutcracker and then i got to thinking well these guys are really smart and it was the time of year so i'm imagining they're probably getting into the holiday spirit crows are smart and they probably want to have a party like everybody else and they're they're probably aware of the nutcracker aren't they the famous you know ballet that always happens around christmas time and so i was able to uh incorporate all these elements into this uh, imaginary scene. And I didn't even care if anybody got this cartoon actually when I did it. I just wanted to draw it because I was it was one of those uh, passion cartoons. Um I, I want to I want to point out one more time as long as we're still this is the the last one in this particular subject of imagination although imagination is going to carry through the entire show this evening. This is one of my favorite examples, too. This is, Beware the eternal curse. Utter superstitious poppycock. Eh, Griswold? <laughs> if you look at the wall, you see these hieroglyphs. 
And you probably think I'm just making up stuff, doing little squiggly things and little birds and little, um, you know, little, little shapes. And the truth of the matter is, I know, again, cartoonists are the most, you know, intelligent of all readers. So I wanted to make sure I got this right. So I went online and I did kind of study to some degree how to make Beware the Eternal Curse. And I was really hoping that someone would notice because I went to this extra effort to make it a more rewarding experience. And I saw this comment online and it says, uh, looking at that comic, it's obviously that Lee did his homework. Just compare the symbols he drew to any random tourist quality conversion chart and the text Beware Eternal Curse is recognizable. Nicely done. So I felt, I felt that the time I took was worth it. It was worth it anyway, even if no one got it. Uh, just for me, but it was really nice to see that someone did get it. So next we have familiarity, and we're all uh, familiar with uh, leaving the coffee cup on top of your car. I just did it. <laughs> I hope it was a plastic coffee cup. <laughs> uh, and this is this is te now technology advances; people stay the same. Uh, so even in the future, people just keep making the same mistakes. Um, Jim, have you ever woken up with bedhead? At my age, at my age, it's it's not not noticeable, but I, I used to. Uh, well, yeah, I think everybody has at some degree or to some degree or another at one point, and so we're all familiar with this. And now, if cows or bulls were doing this, is sleep on your side again. <laughs> And uh, again, I, I'm taking things that are common. They're familiar to most people. Uh, one of the things I remember growing up, and I'm sure I'm not the only kid that had their parents tell them not to tip their chair at the table uh, because, you know, you're going to fall back. You're going to hit your head. And, of course, I didn't listen to my parents. And when I was about seven, I remember tilting my chair back. And fortunately, it was on a cement patio, and I – felt this bump. Oh man, I had this knot on the back of my head. So I did learn my lesson, but it also came in handy later on. Uh, it serves them right. I don't know how many times I've told Junior not to tip his chair at the table. That was a cartoon in the making for several years then. Oh, it was uh, the cartoon saying for decades, <laughs> just waiting for the opportunity. Uh, of course, this is completely ridiculous. Who would ever dine on the side of a cliff? Of course. And, you know, no kids were harmed in the drawing of this. I, I need to start putting disclaimers in every cartoon, I think, these days. Uh, now, if you've ever gotten a hot dog from a street vendor, uh, that's one that's a, the, the one of the ultimate uh, New York experiences. You got to get a hot dog and a pretzel from a street vendor. Uh, you'll know that uh, inevitably you're going to get a condiment on the front of you. So this is uh, you want mustard on that tie? This is your full service hot dog vendor. And familiarity uh, comes in so many shapes and sizes and forms. And again, pop culture is makes my job easier. If I can pull a character from pop culture and put it in a cartoon, you're already halfway there. You're already you're already in on the joke. And uh, the most popular, probably most famous character from pop culture, at least cartoon wise is is uh mickey mouse and this is hey pal you got the time thanks so what what i imagine this to be is uh three o'clock in the afternoon because if it's three o'clock in the morning it's past closing time <laughs> uh tim are, are you uh, a fan of the wizard of oz by any chance for sure okay good what's your favorite character um hmm i don't know Tell, tell me. Okay. 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 Well, okay. I would say my favorite character is is probably the uh, somewhat the the dim scarecrow. But is he really that dim? And you have to imagine, what if you know he didn't have a brain, so he would not be subject to certain inconveniences that uh, everybody else with a brain would have. And this is a uh, distinct disadvantages of being the scarecrow: no brain freeze. And uh, masks are certainly uh, in the news these days. 
And one of our early, uh, oh, I guess radio, television, and movie, uh, movie, I wouldn't say call superhero, but certainly a, a character, a fictional character from the movies would have been the Lone Ranger. But he's so well known, you don't even have to show him. Uh, is it, who was that masked man? How should I know? He was wearing a mask. So as you can see, I, I really like to pull from these, uh, you know, from pop culture. Uh, Warner Brothers, huge influence on my life early on. I, my, that's, I attribute um, probably my love of cartoons from watching Looney Tunes early on. And then, uh, of course, a little bit later than the Earl, then Bugs Bunny came, the Roadrunner and the Coyote. Uh, so in this one, <clears throat> excuse me, we have at the Acme paint store, I don't have to show the front of this coyote. You're familiar with him and you know what he does. He <clears throat> likes to use their products for all sorts of reasons. And this is, he's picking out the perfect paint for painting the fake tunnel. Now, um, I don't know about you, Jim, but I've had to, when I turned 50, I had to go and use, uh, oh, go, go to that, go to the doctor for that procedure that you have to get. Mm -hmm. And I was, I was wondering about this, you know, so Bugs Bunny is how old now? Probably around 80. So he's had to have this procedure a bunch of times. Yeah. And, and this is, you know, EFUD. MD proctologist. There was a time and a place for what's up, doc. This was not one of them. <laughs> so we have the familiarity of having to do the procedure and the character in of itself and the and the phrase that uh, Bugs Bunny is one of his probably most uh, famous phrases. Uh, now, this next one. I'm sure this ties in somehow. I'm, I'm losing it here. How did this tie in? Oh, okay. I know. We are familiar with many, many uh, ads that came out 20 plus years ago for a little blue pill from Pfizer. And I wanted to address this in a cartoon, but I wasn't sure how I was going to address this, uh, this subject, because it's a very sensitive subject. And I wanted to leave a lot to the imagination. And um, I, I didn't want to get too much uh, email criticizing me for uh, having something in a in a public newspaper that shouldn't be in a public newspaper or a family newspaper. So this is what I did to uh, celebrate that little blue pill. The real and somewhat embarrassing cause of the mass extinction reptile dysfunction. <laughs> and I, I really only got one email and it was from a, uh, a reader in San Diego that said, that cartoon had no business being in a family newspaper, but I thought it was funny. So I, I felt good about that. <laughs> um, although I wouldn't have minded a few more letters. Uh, again, familiarity. We all, we all love our dogs. They all love their tennis balls. And we're all familiar with the story of Aladdin and giving three wishes. How do you combine these two things? This is easiest three wishes ever. How simple that would be how, as life is a dog. Now, um, I put this next one in because uh, it happens to be my wife's favorite cartoon. And I think a lot of guys could probably relate to this. They'd be very familiar with this scenario. Welcome back, sir. Are you planning on being our guest for one night only? Or will this be your usual extended stay? Well, Lee, that also um, brings up one question that we got from, from a reader. I don't know if you know who this person is, uh, one Teresa Rubin. And the question is, how often do you end up in the doghouse? I, I could go ask her. <laughs> hey, honey, can you come in here for a minute? Let me see if she'll. I can get her in here. Oh, I, I, I hear her coming. Oh, hey, hon. Um, yeah. Jim has a question for you that you asked. Oh, how yes. Often, how what, often? Jim? Hi. Hi. How often, how, so we're going to get it from the source. How often does Lee end up in the doghouse? 
Oh, more than he would like to, <laughs> but you know, it's all in good fun. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, hon. <laughs> okay, let's uh, let's let's move along now. <laughs> Uh, so, okay, next next up we have brevity. Uh, need I say more? Oh, that's my cheat slide. Uh, so, brevity, what is it? It's economy of art and text. Simplify, simplify, simplify. Some exceptions apply. So what I'm talking about is I don't don't be overdrawn and under funny. That's that's a rule I have. And if you can get away with a cartoon with no caption at all, that is a joyous thing, but then it leaves that much more to the imagination of the reader. And this is, uh, I'm answering the eternal question here. Obviously, you couldn't ask this in a family paper. Well, maybe you can these days. Rules are, seem to be changing on this, but I tend to not. I stay, I don't work blue. In uh, Even just a few words to get this whole point across. This is, uh, we proudly recycle. <laughs> that that sign is definitely needed in here. And I want to say when theaters really open up again, and I know some have opened up, um, this isn't what I see when I go into that theater. <laughs> um, again, not being overdrawn and under funny, only really having what you need in a scene to make that scene really uh, pop. And this is a heavily fortified breakfast cereal. Uh, so this was really fun. And the only really difference here between all these arrows, I mean, beside the arrows all flying out of the very surprised kid, who should not be tipping his chair at the table, by the way, is a crenulated cereal bowl. And I had never done a crenulated cereal bowl before. So I, this was kind of a fun new way to look at things. I, I mentioned before that I had done, uh, done a cartoon Oh, 30 plus years ago. And actually, this cartoon is probably getting up there about 34 years ago, although this is the redrawn version of it. Um, it's it's brevity in that it's a it's a nice clean shot that I don't have to show a lot of detail, but a lot is going on here. So I don't need to show this is the Pillsbury Doughboy meets his maker. <laughs> uh, no Pillsbury Doughboys were harmed in the drawing of this cartoon. And again, I don't have to show the whole, the baker. I just have to show uh, enough of the baker, enough of the countertop uh, and and all of the doughboy to, to get the real point across here. Now, if I'm really, really feeling lazy, this is the cartoon I draw. This is the air and space exhibit. Frankly, I expected a bit more. <laughs> super easy to draw and super fun. <laughs> And I didn't need I didn't need to I didn't need to work the hard that this is a Sunday cartoon you can tell because it's in the landscape format. Uh, again, the, we're gonna I'm gonna throw in familiarity with brevity here, and this is it just uh, it ain't over, you know. And to really add to this cartoon, the original version of it, before I submitted it for publication, it did not have the flat line on there. And that just was the cherry on the cake. The joke would have worked otherwise, but that just was just enough to push it over to the edge here. And and just, again, I want to uh, go back and celebrate my uh, Warner Brother roots here. We have, again, we have a big giant bulby airplane, sort of like a you know World War II transport. Uh, uh, almost, almost, it's like you puffed it full of air though. The Acme piano delivery, proudly serving the cartoon industry for over 60 years. Not a lot, just a couple clouds, an airplane, and a piano. I'm looking for the anvil. Uh, I didn't put any in this this episode, this this uh, presentation tonight, but I'll send you some. <laughs> Uh, and and finally, um, for for this section, uh, I do have a lot of detail in the next cartoon, but I think it warranted it. I, sometimes I like to, you know, luxuriate in that extra bit of detail. Um, this is a uh, keep lying. It's going to be a long winter, <laughs> so very few for words, but a lot going on. To, but to create that atmosphere the, of a nice uh, warm cabin, and great. 
Well, see, we're going to pause for a, for a few minutes right now and go to uh, back to Joe Kita, who has a, an important message um, for all the viewers out there. Joe? Thanks, Jim. And wow, uh, thanks, Lee. I am having a lot of fun uh, uh, watching you explain some of these uh, cartoons. They're really hilarious, and I'm really enjoying it. Uh, there's a few that I really liked. Uh, <laughs> the reptile dysfunction and the proctologists are really hilarious and a bunch of others. But anyway, I just wanted to take a, a few minutes uh, for everyone who's listening to talk a little bit about what's happening at the Bee. So at the Fresno Bee, uh, we value storytelling that sheds light on important issues in the central San Joaquin Valley, which as we all know, is one of the most diverse communities in the entire nation. It's clear that readers like you understand the power of local news. And we're grateful you have trusted us to do that work. And we could not do it really without your support. So what we're to support the coverage that we produce that elevates issues that are important to our diverse communities. Your donation to our fall campaign will support the work of our Report for America journalists, Nadia Lopez and Manuela Tobias. Both of them tell important stories about disadvantaged communities that previously had not really been told. So what we're doing with our fall campaign is we're looking to raise $30,000 to cover the funding gap for these positions and to ensure that they continue into the future. Your donation will help us tell these stories uh, into the future, and I'm really excited uh, about it. So what you need to do uh, if you wanna make a donation is uh, on the screen there, you can see, go to givebutter.com slash the Fresno Bee. Uh, if you go there, uh, you'll be able to make a tax deductible donation to the bee. And also, uh, if you don't have one already, I would encourage you to sign up for a digital subscription to the bee. Uh, you get a lot out of it and help support the work that all of our journalists in our newsroom are doing to make sure that our community is as, ad, is as informed as it, as it could be, and also to tell important stories that you really aren't gonna find anywhere else. So thank you for listening to me. And now I'm gonna send it back uh, to Jim and we can get on with the rest of our program. Thank you. Great, thanks, uh, Joe. Givebutter.com slash the Fresno B. Support local journalism. Um, you know, and support the journalism that, that you like. And, and um, you, it's not easy or uh, cheap to uh, do the kind of journalism that papers like the Fresno Bee and the McClatchy papers up and down California do. So uh, please uh, support uh, community journalism. And part of that uh, journalism uh, that, that uh, the Bee and others offered is all sorts of news and content and obviously uh, comics. So we're going to go back to uh, Lee Rubin for the for the rest of this program. It's all yours, Lee. I'm back. Thanks, guys. I, re I really appreciate that. Important important messages there. Please give if you can. Um, now, okay. So I was talking about brevity and you know don't overdo it and you know economy of text and all that. Well, you know rules like rulers are meant to be broken. Um, so this one has a lot of text, but it was just enough text. So it's, I'm being, I'm still economizing. This is just the beginning, son. Someday people will develop a highly sophisticated system of written communication in which they'll be able to express their deepest and most intimate thoughts and emotions. So as we see, things really haven't changed all that much. This is what we have now. We've gone to emoticons. Uh, and I'm, my captions are gonna get a little bit longer and longer right here. So, but they're necessary to get the point across without going overboard. This is asteroid, asterisk. What's the difference you ask? Well, let's just say that one would have a major impact on our lives. And the other, as you can see, is merely a footnote. And, okay, besides the fact that I just like drawing dinosaurs and I wanted to work the word asterisk into this, I learned something new that asterisk means little star. So did you know that, Jim? I, I thought that was really cool. I, I didn't, but, but I'm going to tuck that away for future use. 
you know, if I did now, if you can fact check me on that, you know, using your journalistic skills, I really appreciate it because someone's going to write in and complain. Well, the Media Institute, that's what we do. So uh, we'll, we'll check it out. OK, thank you. Thank you. So my wife uh, inspired this next cartoon and it's uh, I have to say, and I know she's in there listening. Not another doghouse one. No, no, I'm going to speak only highly. She buys uh, all our uh, vegetables and fruit, generally most of the fruit from this organic uh, farm nearby, and it's terrific. But occasionally, um, you know, it comes home with little extra bits of protein on it, little living bits of protein. And so this is a very long caption. This is, pardon me, ma'am, but before you do anything hasty, like complaining to the management, I'd like to give you my personal guarantee that not only is this delightfully delicious garden salad certified organic, but it's also 100% pesticide free. And, and it, all those, I work on these captions. I want you to know, I really do work on these to make them as tight as possible. So there's no extra words are uh, needed. And, um, we don't get any tomato hornworms around here too much, but we do get little guys that I actually throw out onto the lawn. So I'm I'm probably recycling them for birds. Oh. Now, be, just because I like puns a lot, which you probably have uh, understood from the beginning of this, this evening, uh, I put in my favorite pun filled cartoon, as many puns as I could cram into one cartoon so far. Uh, this is when pressed the tailor, a material witness in the suit, came apart the scenes. His altered testimony completely unraveled. The tale he had woven had been a complete fabrication. <sighs> so that's nine puns in 27 words. It's my record. Uh, and actually, going back again, this cartoon, I think, still holds up. This was done in, in I believe, 1989. That's what it says. Oh, I have 2018 on there because I probably added color or something. <clears throat> so next, levity. And what could be funnier than a flatulence joke coming out of a balloon? I'll give you a chance to think about that. Okay, now that you've had your chance. Do you know what the symbol for helium is, Jim? The periodic... Um. I, I should, but I'm, I'm, I'm going back to that brain freeze uh, comic because I can't remember. Well, it's H-E. So, because it's course. funny. It's funny. He. It's the funniest element. And this is a tasteless, <coughs> excuse me, colorless and odorless too. But it makes it sound so funny. So balloons are wonderful. They, they just evoke levity. They're party, they're party you know, favors. They're, they're just fun to have around. And they like to party apparently too. Uh, yes, your honor. It's true. My client's breath tested positive, but it was someone else's breath. <laughs> <clears throat> That's a good attorney right there. Uh, we've had some political debates lately. I'm, I think they're all done, right? Yep. Okay. So I'm not getting political here. I'm just going to say levity. Wouldn't it be fun if the if it was more like a Three Stooges debate and you could bring pies to the debate, Ooh. it became apparent that neither contestant was particularly satisfied with the decision to declare the debate a tie. So either contestant, you know, or the uh, moderator there. Okay, so I've, I do, I'd like to draw clowns. They're fun. They're, they're very light. Uh, they're they're funny generally, in sometimes unless you're you know a Stephen King fan. So it's here's why your pipe keeps missing. It looks like your comic timing is off. So this pie was off the mark. Uh, more levity, few words, using it to your imagination. You've got familiarity. Where they're all starting to add up here. Humpty's repair service because who didn't like to see the butt crack of an egg? And any time I can put a butt crack in a cartoon, it's a good day. It, it just answers uh, to that eight-year-old in me. Um, here we, this is a light dinner. Uh, see, <laughs> speaking of levity, see the amazing sword swallower, swallower. So we've got, it's not overdrawn. Just enough words. It's got levity. It's got familiarity. It's got all the elements uh, just necessary. 
Um, also, there can be levity at the breakfast table. You know, th this is totally bogus. There's no naval officer in here, crunchy or otherwise. <laughs> uh, you ever, did you ever have Captain Crunch, uh, Jim? I did. Okay, oh, what, does it do? what does it do to the roof of your mouth? <laughs> it crunches it up. It tears it up, something terrible, but it's so sweet and delicious. Uh, now, I don't know if one of my sons is watching tonight. Ryan, if you're watching, I wanted to let you know you inspired this next cartoon. Uh, you have a, He has a tattoo of a kraken on his arm, but it's not this kraken. This is, uh, ahoy, Captain, tis the legendary kraken. <laughs> and we've got uh, levity as far as, uh, well, in, in, in bears. Uh, Jim, you're familiar with the... Uh, you know, you're you're familiar with astronomy to some degree, right? Sure. Okay. So, what's your favorite constellation? Uh, the Milky Way. Well, that's a whole that's a whole bunch of constellations. <laughs> <laughs> how about how about uh, the Big Dipper and the Little Dipper? We'll go for the the ones that everybody can spot. The Big Dipper. Okay. There we go. This is what we got. The Big Dipper, the Little Dipper, Ursa Major, and Ursa Minor. Uh, everything is focused right on these guys, and the little guy is a little uh, embarrassed. And I got to say, the bears in this were somewhat inspired by that fantastic short animation piece called Creature Comforts. Uh, and if you haven't seen it, uh, look it up. It's only a few minutes long uh, on YouTube. It's wonderful. Uh, so, again, more levity going back to my childhood, and now you can watch it any old time. The Three Stooges again. This is a, ow, Mo, is that you? This is Curly's peephole. And again, if you can do flatulence, that's a very light, hopefully, subject. This is a, dude, I hate to be the one to tell you this, but you've got really bad breath. I'm sorry, were you talking to me? <laughs> so, and all of these cartoons have an element of surprise. Uh, so again, we're back to clowns, and again, we now we're. I'm going to really focus on the surprise part. This is. What do we want? Slapstick. When do we want it? <laughs> when using a two-panel cartoon, you can really get the surprise part across. You've got the, you know, you got the setup and the payoff. You don't need anything else. There's just a black line in between dividing the two, and that's where you get to fill in the blank. Um, in honor of uh, Halloween, I've decided to uh, put this cartoon in. One of my most surprising. This is a uh, boo. Oops. And uh, not everyone loves clowns. Peekaboo. I see you. Now, a lot is left to your imagination here, and it's still levity. I guess, sort of. No clowns were actually harmed, though. Um, I, Jim, are, are you familiar with the song, If I Had a Hammer? Sure. Okay. Now, if you're not, if anybody's not familiar with that song, just Google it. It's a wonderful folk song from the uh, the 60s, classic folk song, uh, which also provided some surprise, especially for the singer in the cartoon. If you notice, uh, he's singing, If I Had a Hammer... And uh, the, we've all had a neighbor that's played their music too loud. And this is at 3 o'clock. And at 3.05, he's just about had enough. And again, surprise can come in a variety of forms. And this is a, hey, Pop, what does contrast mean? Fly a little to the left. Get it? Got it. <laughs> really simple, simple cartoon. Uh, but it's it, it's very to me it's very graphically interesting. Uh, mm -hmm. It pops the the contrast on there. Um, more surprise, and we're going to see the the surprised character in here. You know, wanna wanna play right now? Call me five 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 three one nine seven. Together we'll have a ball. <laughs> oh, this is the the same lab that made an earlier appearance this evening. Now. Finally, of surprise, the ultimate surprise. And it, every time that I can draw a joke that really has that 
you know, knockout element of surprise. It answers my need to pull pra practical jokes. I really do like practical jokes as long as no one's getting hurt. And this is uh, one of the ultimate practical jokes. This is fresh underwear. So he's also an entrepreneur there. Mm -hmm. So how do we improve on a good idea? And I want to I want to point this out because I really try to again improve to make a cartoon. Is it possible in order to create a more perfect cartoon? I, these these rings this, these words sound familiar from somewhere. Can, where did I have it in order to create a more perfect something? Help me out here. A union. Oh, there we go. Okay, thank you. <laughs> well, here we have this big conundrum. Me can't. Me can't find sticks to rub together. I can't even see the cartoon. Just a second. <laughs> but but me need to light fire to find sticks. How about lending me a hand? You know, <laughs> click. Thanks. So it's a simple improvement. All he needed to do was reach up and turn on the light. Now, uh, if you're familiar with the, well, are you familiar with the movie Scarface? Sure. Yeah. Okay. So it's a pretty violent movie, isn't it? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. All right. So I, I was had this idea, and I wanted to do a cartoon combining Scarface with the Wizard of Oz, because I'm sure you've had this thought too. You want to do the Scarface with the Wizard of Oz, meld them together. How are we going to do that? So I, I did this cartoon, and this is what it turned out. You know, you want to play rough, okay? Say hello to my little friend. So we've got the witch throwing the flames, and we've got the and she throws it at the scarecrow in the movie, but this time the scarecrow isn't having it. And he's got a, a shotgun in there. And I ran this by my friend Jim in Albany, New York. And if you're watching tonight, Jim, I'm giving you a shout out here uh, because this is Scarecrow. And he thought, you know, that's a really funny cartoon, but you missed a golden opportunity. You should have had the Scarecrow have like a super soaker. Right. And I thought, oh, Hey, I haven't turned the cartoon in yet. So it's a good idea, but I made it, I think because of his suggestion, I made it funnier by adding this super soaker in here. And again, Jim, thank you. You got credit on the top of that cartoon. My hat's off to you for the suggestion. Uh, and uh, I have another friend of mine, Ryan, who you mentioned earlier, we were working on the TV show, Drawing Inspiration together and are still working on it. Um, he was the first person I knew to ever get a video doorbell. He's a real tech guy, gets, you know, keeps up on the latest electronic stuff that's going out there. And I sent him this cartoon because he inspired it. And this is, uh, this new doorbell app is amazing. You can see who's right out from, right out front from anywhere in your home. And he said, it's a really good gag, Lee, but what I think it'd be funnier if the hole was lower just to, to emphasize that they really don't need this doorbell app. And I thought, he's right. So I turned it in like this. Yep. So it really worked. Now, I don't always catch my own, uh, mis I don't even say mistakes. I... I could improve on this next cartoon. And, and and how I thought of this was, we're all hearing about social distancing these days and also disparity of wealth because I do read a lot of news. So we're, I'm thinking, what if we had have social distancing? What about socialist distancing? And I'm gonna ask you this question. If I could, if you could pick a cartoon character to represent the ultimate capitalist, who would you pick? Um. I'll give you a hint. The Monopoly, Monopoly guy? The Monopoly guy, yes, yes, thank you. Mr. Pennybags. So he just worked out perfectly here for this. Here he is running down the running around uh, the, the corner here or running past this guy in the sidewalk, the the kind of the uh, you know the socialist, I guess you could call him. Uh, he's down with capitalists and he's and, uh, Mr. Pennybags is running with his big bag of uh, dough. And then I realized after this cartoon was published that I blew it. I could have made it better just a little bit by, by adding this. If you look, he's running, he could have been running around the Monopoly board mm -hmm. and a little bit of blue, a little triangle of blue in the corner there. And we have the kind of deep uh, purple or magenta here. 
uh, boardwalk and park place and uh, Mediterranean and the, the tinge of green because the Monopoly board has a very slight tint to it. So that would have just been a, a great way to just add that much more fun detail to it, just yep. for my own personal uh, fun, though. So again, um, I got a couple more cartoons here. Can I share them with you? Sure. Yeah, let's go. So imagination, again, it's the imagination and the uh, I hope that I hope I can inspire people with, the, you know, my thought process here tonight, because I, I really think that, um, you know, inspiration can strike anywhere, um, you know, for, and this is from Mother Goose inspiration struck at the most unexpected moments. And I want to give you another example of that. Um, Last year, when I was back at uh, Rochester Institute of Technology, I was dropping uh, Ryan uh, and his wife and daughter off at the airport. And when they got on it, and I was I was essentially their Uber driver because uh, I had the rental car and uh, they brought their adorable daughter with her, uh, Avery. And after they got out of the car, I looked at the back seat and this is what I saw. Oh, it's a, it's a nice little mess there. We got crusts of English muffins and a little bag of trash and her name stamped all over a bunch of paper because they had bought her Avery on a rubber stamp. And and I felt inspired by this. You know, most people would probably just see this as a mess. And I I was inspired. I thought, well, if, I'm an, if I was their Uber driver and Uber drivers offer free snacks, this is a, all you can find free snacks, <laughs> ride sharing services to avoid. Uh, so again, we just keep your mind open, your eyes open, and your imagination open, because uh, you know there's a lot more. I mean, I'm always looking for 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 uh, inspiration beyond the borders of this cartoon. Much like, uh, I mean, you know, beyond these little eight by nine borders, and much like these guys, you know, spectacular isn't in sun. Uh, in fact, astronomers say there may be billions more little white dots beyond the border of this cartoon. Um, so, Jim, with that, ben. I'm going to throw this up there, and I want to thank you and Joe and Connie and everybody else that has made this event possible. Yeah. Uh, thank you. We're, we're going to take a couple of um, of uh, reader questions if you're if you're ready for them. I'm happy to do that. Let's take a couple of uh, questions from people that submitted, uh, and we can see if we can get a few in. So, um, this is from a young. Uh, Girl, age nine. How does it feel to be famous? Um, I'll let me call Paul McCartney and ask him. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I I don't ever think of myself in that way at all. I just think of myself as a working artist. Um, you know, doing the Lord's work and bringing humor to people every day. It's just a lot of fun. It's a it's a joy. I feel privileged to do this. Um, well, we're we're privileged to 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 be able to see your cartoons on a daily basis. So thank you for that. I think this question from David, it comes from the same family. Um, um, do you have a muse? And if so, who? Oh, I have many, many muses. It's uh, whatever inspires me that particular day is my muse. I mean, really, it changes day to day to day to day. Um, I, 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 I don't mean to be so general, but I really... I have no one muse. I, the, the world is is my muse. Yeah, great. So this is a question from Lauren. How many ideas do you think you have left? Then what? <laughs> well, I, I don't know if I got to say this early on but about the imagination, but it is something we're all blessed with. And it's an infinite quantity as far as I'm concerned. There is no, there's no reason to run out of ideas ever. You just have to find new combinations of of other of other, other things to connect to create something new. It's all it's all about connecting the dots. I I don't I don't expect I'll be running out of ideas anytime soon. Um, I hope. If I do, just you know, throw something at me. <laughs> there you go. So this is from uh, from Mike. He says, "Are there uh, joke and cartoon similarities like the joke's power of three punchlines?" Explain that to me a little bit. So the you know the punchline you know kind of that power of three. Um, oh yes, yeah. Well, I do, I do, I will use if I'm listing something in a cartoon, I will use that. The the yeah, it three has a. You need three for any kind of rhythm, right? Not that I'm yeah. a musician, but 
so that does apply to comedy and i and in turn cartoons you, it just it's funnier for whatever reason it is it's a, some weird mathematical thing so yes yeah so frank has an interesting cart, uh question then i think maybe a few of uh, folks out there may may also be thinking about it do all cartoon artists draw their own characters and title their own cartoons uh no <laughs> how's that for a, a no i know there are some there are teams of cartoonists that work together some draw some write some write some draw some do both others accept uh they'll accept art or cartoon concepts from other readers uh some people have like teams of people that work on them i'm a i'm a one man uh a, a one man shop although i have, have taken ideas a long time ago from my brother hi paul if you're watching um out there uh you feel free to send me some really usable ones <laughs> no but no i mean really it, it runs the gamut uh you know you can have teams it's not to say i'm not inspired by people what they say because they may say it's just the right thing to trigger an idea yeah do people send you ideas uh not very often um and and that's okay because I don't usually know, you know, I don't know where they've got the idea and they may have seen it and inadvertently thought, Hey, I just had that really great idea. And, and they'll, they'll send it to me because, you know, in the, in the cartoon universe, I've seen it happen on the same page on the same day where cartoonists will have such similar ideas. It's crazy. And they, I know these guys haven't probably communicated with each other. I don't think it was planned. So yeah. So uh, Greg um, uh, asked this question, Lee, what is your obsession with cows? Are there other mammals besides humans that interest you? All animals are my friends, Greg. Uh, no, I really, I like, I love drawing all animals. On that bookshelf behind me, I have a book from the early 1950s that was my mom and how to draw animals. And none of mine look realistic at all. They're all very cartoony, but, um, I, I mean, for any kind of creature, from insects to cows to aliens to microbes, whatever, whatever kind of uh, gives me inspiration that day. Great. Well, we got a couple more questions, and then we're gonna we're gonna close. So uh, thank you, um, um, Lee, for for all this uh, gr great inspiration. Um, so um, Brenda um, says, um, I guess it's from Terry. Thanks for your math humor. Can you keep it coming? I find it a good way for teachers and students to connect. I'm happy to do so since I didn't do so great in math. A little, a little, a little shout out. And so the, the, the teachers are, are loving you um, for that. Um, and maybe we'll close with this uh, question, um, Lee, from uh, Jansen. What is your most desired outcome from people reading uh, your cartoons? Well, that they would want to come back and read it again tomorrow. And the next day, and the next day, and the next day, and until I stop doing that, that would be the most rewarding. And the and the other part is, of course, for them to spit out their coffee or milk or orange juice on, on their paper or and get a get a screen protector if you want to be. I don't want to be sued for that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a what a fun evening um, that that you've given it. We're uh, we're going to close now and thank you uh, very much. Uh, we're at the end of our time, so um, thank you to everyone who turned in and. Thank you to the Fresno Bee, and thanks, of course, uh, to Lee R Rubin. Um, it was a great evening, and uh, uh, please support local journalism. Uh, it's really important uh, to help, and if you can help uh, in the Fresno Bee campaign in any way that you can, that would be great. So um, givebutter.com slash the Fresno Bee, and you can donate um, to help community journalism. Any, any last word, Lee, to our viewers? I just want to thank uh, you and Joe and Connie and everybody else that was able to put this together. Um, it, it's We've been working on this for quite a while. It was supposed to take place last April 1st, which would have been very appropriate live. It would have been in Fresno. But you know what? This is really fun, and I'm glad we finally got to do it. So thank you all. It's just It's been a real pleasure. I hope we get to do it again. We're going to do it for sure. And thank you, everyone, for tuning in. We're going to close now. So have a nice evening. Thanks, Lee. Good night.